Chapter 14, Stealing Virtue. What? cried De Denny and Carl simultaneously. Marvin poked his head farther out of the pocket, almost toppling to the floor. Christina smiled. Not the real drawing, don't worry. James's copy of it. I don't understand, Carl said. Denny frowned, raking his hair back with one hand. Nor do I. And since the real one belongs to the Getty, I think I'd better hear the details of this. Perhaps we should sit down. Christina pulled out a chair and sank into it, placing the drawing in front of her, her slim hands flanking it on the table. Denny and Carl sat down on either side of her, but James remained standing. So I can see, Marvin thought gratefully. Well, Christina began. Denny is familiar with the background of all this, but I doubt you two are. She turned to Carl. Do you know anything about art heists? Sure, Carl said. The famous ones. The Mona Lisa, the Gardner Museum in Boston. Wait, what? asked James. What are those? Christina took off her glasses and set them on the table, staring at the drawing. The most famous art thefts of all time. The Mona Lisa was stolen in 1911. An Italian workman took it from the Louvre, planning to return it to Italy. It was missing for two years, but they got it back. She rubbed her forehead. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum wasn't so lucky. The Isabella was the location of the biggest single art theft in history. In 1990, two men dressed as police officers arrived in the early morning, saying they were responding to a call. They handcuffed the security guards and stole three Rembrandts, a Vermeer, a Manet, and five Degas paintings, among others. The whole lot was worth almost $400 million. They've never been found. Wow, said James. Marvin thought about all of those paintings gone. James looked at Christina. But why do people steal them? What do they do with them? Christina sighed. Usually it's for the money, she said. But of course the paintings are often so well known they can't be sold openly at auction. Denny nodded, rubbing his forehead. The market in stolen art is a difficult one. Thieves can't sell to museums or reputable dealers. Any private collector who buys a stolen painting can't display it publicly. He'd have to want it for its own sake, just for the art, and be willing to enjoy it in private. Christina nodded. So it tends to be a black market business. Criminals trade the paintings for other forbidden things, like guns or drugs. Really? James's eyes were wide. Marvin had to admit it was hard to picture someone swapping one of those lovely, delicate, centuries-old artwork for a secret stash of weapons. Well, that's one kind of theft, Denny interjected. Stealing art is not like other crimes. Sometimes it's not for money at all. Sometimes it's really for love. But that's true, Christina nodded. There can be genuine feeling behind it. In the case of the Mona Lisa, the thief just wanted the painting returned to its homeland. Why would he care about that? James asked. Carl ruffled his hair. It's Leonardo da Vinci's most famous work. Many Italians see it as a national treasure. They are not happy that it is currently in a French museum. His works are often targets for thieves, Christina said. Madonna with the yarn winder was taken from a Scottish castle several years ago by two men posing as tourists. They overpowered a guide and took it right off the wall. Was that one worth a lot of money too? James asked. Oh yes, it's a masterpiece. 50 million, 100 million, never recovered. James let out a long breath and Marvin wasn't sure whether it was because of the lost money or the lost painting. Did they ever get them back? The paintings, I mean. He asked Christina. It's rare, but it happens. You can't imagine how exciting that is. She squeezed James's shoulder. When Edmer, Edward, 
Edvard, I'm sorry, Edvard Munch's painting, The Scream, was found. The museum opened its doors for a night and served champagne to everyone. Everyone in the art world was overjoyed. And then there was that strange theft in Manchester, right, Denny? Christina turned to Denny for confirmation. In England, a few years ago, a bunch of stolen canvases by Van Gogh, Picasso, and Gauguin were found rolled up in a cardboard tube and stuffed behind a public toilet just down the street from the gallery where they'd been stolen two days earlier. Was the thief ever caught? Carl asked. Denny shook his head. Not that I recall. And in that case, he left a nice note complimenting the gallery on its security. He smiled. Again, it's not your typical crime, and the people involved are not your typical criminals. Well, Christina protested, sometimes they are. The National Museum in Stockholm, three men with guns broke in and stole a Rembrandt self-portrait and two Renoir. Yes, that's correct, Denny murmured. They escaped by speedboat. Those paintings were recovered by a Danish, Danish policeman posing undercover as an art buyer. Really, James said. They got all of them back? Yes, Christina answered, lost in thought. All of them. The room fell silent. Marvin's head was spinning. It was hard to imagine dusty, quiet museums as the setting for such flamboyant crimes. It was also hard to believe that a painting or drawing could be worth so many millions of dollars. Well, what does this all have to do with the Durer, draw Durer drawings? Carl asked finally. There are four drawings, actually, Christina said, of the four cardinal virtues, fortitude, justice, prudence, and temperance. Bellini drew only a picture of fortitude, but Durer drew pictures of all four, all miniatures incredibly detailed. What does that mean, prudence, James asked. His father paused. Well, it means carefulness, really, being cautious, thinking things through. That was like James, thought Marvin. James was always careful. And temperance is moderation, Christina explained, not overdoing it. Marvin rolled his eyes, though no one could see him. Grown-ups couldn't seem to understand that it was always better to overdo it. Okay, there are four dear drawings, Carl prompted her, and and they were stolen, or at least three of them were. Prudence and Temperance were taken from a little museum in Baden-Baden, Germany, two years ago. They were so small, the thief just lifted the frames from the wall and tucked them under his jacket. It would be easy to hide those drawings, Marvin thought. They were very little. Justice, Christina explained. She hesitated. Marvin saw that Denny was watching her, his expression a blend of sympathy and regret. When she didn't go on, he started talking himself. Justice was taken just last year. The Met had just purchased it at Christina's urging from a London dealer. It was a major coup for the collection. Old master drawings have become a hot ticket lately, selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I wanted it for the Getty, of course. He smiled down at James, a companion to fortitude. My museum in California has quite a collection of European drawings, and I have a soft spot for Durer, for the virtue drawings in particular. Justice had minor water damage, Christina continued. It was in the conservation department last March, being repaired when the office was broken into. That drawing was the only thing taken. She shook her head at Denny. It was terrible, Denny said. I was in New York for a conference and the theft cast a pall over our entire weekend. We were all just stunned. I remember reading about that, Carl said, but why only that drawing? There must have been many other valuable artworks in conservation. Christina and Denny exchanged a wistful smile. Dürer, Denny said. Yes, Dürer, Christina agreed. If it were just an ordinary theft, you're right. There were several valuable faint paintings in the office, but this wasn't about the money, in my opinion nor were the thefts of the other two virtue drawings, prudence and temperance. People have a thing for juror. Carl raised an eyebrow, but Marvin immediately understood. That was the power of the drawings, the sadness, homeliness even, of the people. They were just so, so real. 
James chewed his lip, studying Marvin's picture of the woman and the lion. But I don't see why you need a copy of this one, he said. You have this one. Why don't you want a copy of Justice, since that's the one that's missing? Because, James, Christina said eagerly, her words soft and rushed. I think someone is collecting these drawings. And whoever that person is, he'll want the complete set. The four virtues, this is the only one left. She turned to Denny. I've been talking to people at the FBI in the art theft program. They say it might work. They're willing to help. Help what? Carl exclaimed in frustration. I still do not understand. James dropped into a chair and Marvin was immediately blocked from any view of the adults. He inched his way out of the pocket and climbed James's zipper surreps surreptitiously, glad that everyone's attention was focused elsewhere. Christina took a deep breath. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I know this is complicated, but everything is almost in place. She looked at Denny. I have the support of the FBI. They have an underground contact, someone who deals in stolen art. What I need is a forgery of fortitude. But why? James asked. Christina twisted her hands together, her face flushed. This is my plan. We'll have you draw it again, James, on the right paper with the right ink. Then we'll substitute your drawing for the real one and stage a theft. Listen, the drawing has to be good, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Everyone knows fortitude is part of this exhibition. They know it's real. Our forgery won't be judged for authenticity by the thief, only by the person intending to buy it. And that deal will never happen. What thief? Carl asked. This isn't making any sense. You're gonna hire someone to steal your own drawing? The forgery, not the real one. And the thief will be someone who works for the FBI. She paused. They'll put some kind of tracking device on the fake drawing of fortitude. The FBI will get the drawing into the hands of someone who deals in stolen art. And that person will lead you to the other drawings, Denny finished. He nodded slowly, to justice. Oh, that's very clever. Oh, it was clever, Martin, Marvin thought. Who'd suspect a museum of masterminding its own burglary and of forging its own art? Carl shook his head. But how do you get the drawing to the black market? That's not exactly easy. It's not like you have regular contact with criminals. He raised his eyebrows, adding, at least I assume you don't. No, Christina allowed. But remember what Denny said about the Stockholm theft? The undercover, undercover policeman? That's been one of the most effective ways to recover stolen art. Police officers or FBI agents posing as underground art dealers. I feel sure we can get the forgery into the right hands, she smiled. Or the wrong hands, as the case may be. My hat is off to you, Christina, Denny said. That is an impressive plan. So you're going to pretend to steal my drawing, James asked. Christina nodded. But what if you're wrong, Carl asked. What if there isn't one person who is collecting the complete set? What if the drawings aren't even together? Well, that is always a possibility. And what if something happens to my drawing? James asked. In his spot on James's jacket, Marvin shuddered. His drawing, would it disappear into this world of fake policemen and guns and multi-million dollar paintings lost forever? Christina knelt beside James, inches away from Marvin, who quickly hid himself in a fold of fabric. The whole thing is a gamble, I know that, she said gently, looking only at James. Marvin realized this was one of the things he liked about Christina, how she gave James her full attention, as though anything he said or asked was every bit as important as the comments coming from the grown-ups. The FBI doesn't care, she continued, whether our stage burglary leads to the stolen juror drawings or to other stolen works of art. It will still point the way to key players in the underground art market. But of course, I care. If this doesn't give us justice, I'll be, she hesitated, I'll just be so disappointed. Carl still looked uncertain. I see how it could work, but you, won't you need a lot of other people on board? I mean, the museum security staff, the New York City police, the newspapers. Oh, no. Well, not the newspapers. Denny interrupted. I assume it's important for the press to report this as if it were a real theft. 
Yes, Christina agreed. It has to look like a real burglary from the outside. But Carl, you're right about the others. I have to get permission from the director of the Met and make sure the local police are willing to help. That's why the involvement of the FBI is so important. And Denny, I want you to clear it with the Getty too, obviously, since it's one of your loaned pieces that's the center of the whole plan. The thing is, Christina kept staring at James, her eyes filled with wonder. This idea occurred to me months ago when Denny and I were discussing the setup for the exhibit, but I never thought I'd find someone who could do the forgery of fortitude. I didn't believe that it was even possible until I saw your drawing, James. And then I thought, he could do it, and you did. Marvin felt a strange mixture of pride and fear and worry. James only blushed, staring at the drawing. Okay, he said quietly. You want me to copy it so you can steal it? Okay. Yes, Christina agreed. Steal the fake one to find the real one. Justice.